Hello, my name is John Arnold and this is PhotoWalkthrough.com Tutorial 7, Chapter 2. And today we're going to get started at last on our latest image of this distorted tree. Uh, now, as the key night among you will have noticed, this show is out early. I'm launching it on Saturday instead of the usual Monday. That's because I'm on holiday now for yet another week away, and I don't expect to have internet access while I'm there. So rather than leave you bereft and feeling unloved on Monday, you're getting it today. Don't say I never give you anything. Right, so we looked at our image last week and we came up with a plan. And our plan was uh, that we were going to start off, let's just have a look at the image here and turn off the original edits there. Right, we were going to start off by spot editing out that little piece of litter at the side there and then we're going to do a black and white conversion. And those are the two steps that I want to cover today. So I'm going to begin, I'm just using tab to bring back my buttons and uh, my windows there. and. We're going to start off today, and I thought what I might do today is show you a number of different ways of doing things. So I'm going to start off um, where I spot editing this litter, and I'm going to show you four different ways, just for a laugh. Now, those of you that have watched some of my shows in the past will have heard me, whoops, will have heard me mention the Make It Go Away brush, uh, which is, in Photoshop terms, is actually the spot healing brush tool. Uh, which I believe is the default one that's got selected. So when you open your Photoshop, this button here with a little band-aid and the little dotted line uh, behind it is a, a spot healing brush tool. And this is the sort of occasion where the spot healing brush tool usually does a very nice job. Um, so I'm just zooming in there and making the the bit of, it's actually a bit of, it's not litter, it's actually just a little branch or something, a bit of broken wood. Um, and I'm just going to draw my region over the top of that. And now as you can see it's actually not done a great job. The way the spot healing brush tool works is that it looks for a nearby texture that is similar to the area that you're painting over and it tries to copy that texture into the area that you paint in and then try and make the colors match the surrounding area. And in this case it's managed to choose a bit of texture that really doesn't look right at all. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z on that to undo that change. And the next um, the next method that, that I would normally choose, if, if my spot healing brush tool isn't working, then I might try instead the clone stamping tool, which is this button just below it. And again, anybody that's watched the show before will, will have seen me do this sort of thing before. Um, if you go to the clone stamping tool, the first thing you need to do is set a source point. So you say, right, I want to copy from this part of the image here. And the way you do it is you press the Option or Alt key on your keyboard and you get this cursor. And then you click on your image and say, right, that sets where I'm copying from. You can now release the Option or Alt key and paint over the top of the bit of the image that you want to copy in from. A copy into. Uh, now as you can see I've managed to choose a bit of ground that's a different colour there. The texture is pretty good but I'm going to control Z that again to take that change out because the colours aren't very good. So let's try taking a different bit of image that is the right sort of colour. That's done a better job but now we've got this little bit of branch here being repeated here and our eyes might see that. So once again I'm going to undo that change. And I'm going to try a different tool. Now this is one that you may not have seen me use before. I'm going to go for the patch tool. Now it's hidden underneath the spot healing brush tool. So if you click on that spot healing brush tool and keep your uh, mouse button pressed, you get this window up and you can choose the patch tool. Now the way the patch tool works is you draw a region around the thing you want to, uh, the thing you want to fix. And when you release, you get a marching ant selection, just like the marquee tool. Now I need to actually be on my pixel layer here. Um, and the way you use this tool is, once you've got your region selected that you want to copy, uh, correct rather, you click inside it, and you drag your cursor away, and find another bit of ground that's got a similar texture to the area that you're copying into. So that area up there has got a sort of a wood barky texture. I don't want to go too far into the distance because the, the texture's getting smaller and, and changing up there. I don't want to come too close because the texture's larger here. So you want to choose somewhere sort of nearby in the image with the right sort of te texture. And don't worry too much about the colours. Let me, let me choose this bit here. You can see up here it's, it's a much lighter colour. But when I release, if I let go now, 
what you saw it did there was it actually blended the colour to match the surrounding region. So that's probably not where I would choose for this. For this case, oops. For this case, what I would probably choose is somewhere maybe down here. And I think that's done a pretty clean edit. That's that one's probably my favourite for now. Um, the only problem with the patch tool is that you can't edit onto a new layer. So all these edits I've been doing so far directly onto the background layer, which for a small edit like this isn't such a bad thing. But normally I don't like uh, destructive edits. So once again, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to press Control D to remove my selection. And I'm going to go back to an old stalwart. I'm going to go for the healing brush tool. And once again, I've just clicked and held on this spot healing brush tool, or what was now showing the patch tool, and getting this menu up. And as you can see, the healing brush tool is a very similar icon to the spot healing brush tool. The reason for that is that the spot healing brush tool is a newer version of the healing brush tool. Um, the healing brush tool used to work in, uh, used to used to be the only option rather, in Photoshop CS1, I think. And I think the spot healing brush tool was introduced in CS2. And the way this works is very much like the spot edit, uh, the uh, clone stamping tool. So I, I mentioned not doing, not liking destructive edits before. So with my background selected, I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call it spot edits. And with the healing brush tool selected. Once again, we need to set the part of the image that we want to copy our texture from. So I'm going to press the Option or Alt key, click on my image to set the source point for my texture. And once again, just like the clone stamping tool, I'm going to paint over the top. And you can see that the color is quite dark there. And when I release, it matches the color to the surrounding area. So a very similar tool to the way the spot healing brush tool works. But in this case, because we can set the source point for our texture ourselves, we're getting a much better edit. And um, because I was working on a spot edit layer, and because I got aligned and sample all layers turned on up here, if I just hide my background, you can see on the spot edit layer there, that's the, that's the only thing on this spot edit layer. It's just that one little edit, which is over the top of my background layer, and just conceals that little bit of wood that's lying on the ground there. So that's four different ways of doing um, a, a spot edit on an image like this. Um, out of those four, the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool, and the clone stamp can all be done onto a spot edit layer, just like, like I showed you just there. The patch tool, which can quite often give really good results, cannot be done onto a um, uh, onto a spot edit layer, so that's that's going to be a destructive edit, but it does tend to give good results. But if you're looking at trying to do something with a patch tool and want those results, try going back to the old stalwart healing brush tool, which is uh, very similar to the patch tool. It, it blends in the colours nicely, and you can choose your own bit of texture. Right. So the next step on this uh, was to do a black and white conversion, and You've, if you've been watching the show before, you'll have seen me do these things many times. So I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to show you three different ways of doing a black and white conversion. And some of you will say this is a cop-out, but the first way is a really obvious one. I'm just going to do a new adjustment layer. So I'm pressing the new adjustment layer button here. And I'm going to do hue saturation. And that pops up this dialog here. And I'm just going to drag the saturation slider all the way down to zero. And that's the simplest black and white conversion of all. So all that's doing is just taking all of the color information and throwing it away. It's just taking the lightness information from all three color channels, the red, red, green, and blue, all in equal measure being used to convert to black and white there. Now, the second way I'm going to show you is um, uh, I, I don't know whether Russell Brown came up with this himself, but it's one that I saw in a Russell Brown video. Uh, it's kind of a slick. Uh, way of doing it, but I, I quite often tried this and I find it very difficult to control, but I'll show you anyway. So I'm going to keep that black and white hue saturation layer. All that's doing is a regular hue saturation layer with the saturation slider all the way down to minus 100. Now underneath that, so I want to make a layer underneath the hue saturation layer, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to click on the layer below it, and I'm going to do another hue saturation and this time, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to press OK. So we've now got a hue saturation layer 
beneath the hue saturation layer and that top one is the one that takes all the color out. Now the way Dr. Brown showed you this, he talked about that top one being the film. So if you imagine everything from the bottom here is the real world and this is the film that you want to develop the image onto, then this layer in the middle here he called the filter, which is not a bad way of looking at it. So I've just renamed those two layers to film and filter. And this filter layer, what we're interested in doing is setting the colors. So I'm going to set the blending mode on that filter layer to color. And now when we open our hue saturation window, if we drag the hue slider around, let me just drag this so you can see the image. If I drag the hue slider around, you can see the tones in the image are changing in the background. Now that's quite interesting, but quite difficult to control and it's quite difficult to decide what you like. So just dragging it back and forth, looking for things that interest me. The front, what, what am I interested in, in, in achieving with this image? I want detail here. I want strong shadows. I want a very stark, uh, high contrast image. I want the focus to be on the foreground tree and on the texture. And I want it to, I want probably this texture here to be the main element followed by the textures on these two upward facing branches. I want to darken down the sky as much as I can, but I'll do more about that in the next coming tutorials. Uh, and I want a bit of detail in the foreground here, but not too much. So let's see where on this slider that works for us. Just looking at the, for, the, the forefront of the tree here, I'm just finding that that bit there is a bit that I want to lighten. And it's, it's quite light there on the slider, it's going darker and darker and darker, so I don't want any of those tones. And it lightens up again at the end. And it lightens up just a little bit more, just about there, just off the left hand end of the, of the hue slider. Now also what I can do is I can also drag the saturation up and down to increase or decrease the effect of that change. Now something else I've noticed on this image when I drag the slider around is that going back for, to the middle there, just watch these trees up at the top here against the blue sky. As I drag that down, we're getting around about there. Also just off the left hand end of this hue slider, we're getting a darkening in the sky a little bit. We're seeing more detail in the tops of the trees there. So I think that's, if I'm going to do it this way, that's probably where I would choose. I would also just like to look at the ground and the foreground here and drag the slider left and right a bit. And it's not making much difference to the foreground, but it is making some difference to the roots of the tree here. So the roots are going a bit dark there. And they stay a bit dark all the way up until the end. Let's try the other end. They lighten up a little bit there. Yeah. So we're, we're back at the left hand end of this again. This is, this is simply because the image I've, I've taken here has got uh, some quite similar colors in it. Quite often when you're doing this with an image you'll find that there's one bit of the image that you like on one point of the hue slider and another bit that you like on another part of the hue slider. And in a future tutorial I will show you how to go about um, using those different, um, different conversions in different parts of the image. But for today I'm doing a, a show at the last minute so I'm just going to show you what I've got in mind to show you and then I'm going to call it a night. So um, I think probably here in this case I would choose about there and I would drag this saturation up a little bit and as I drag the saturation up these trees up here are darkening and bringing out some detail. I don't want to go too far because if you look this this background detail here is lightening up now and I don't want I don't want too much of the viewer's attention to be taken away over there. So just drag that slider up as far as I can get away with. Don't want to lighten that too much. I've got a bit of lightning here, I've got a bit of darkening here, got a bit of detail in the roots of the tree. I think I would probably stop there and press OK. And if I turn on and off that filter layer, you can see that is actually making a very large difference to the to the black and white conversion. So that's a possible way of doing a black and white conversion. So I'll just group those up, 
and turn them off. Let's try the final way. Now this is my normal way, so apologies for the uh, repetition, but this is the way I normally do these things, and I personally think this is the one that gives you the most flexibility. So, with the background layer selected, you can only do this if you've got a bitmap layer selected, um, Control 1 shows us the red channel, Control 2 shows us the green channel, and Control 3 shows us the blue channel. And in this case, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for which of these channels gives me an image that is closest to the way I want my image to look in the end. So, in this case, once again, I'm looking at detail on the front of the tree here, I'm looking at detail in the foreground, and I'm looking at maybe trying to darken that sky if I can. So, the red channel, that's, that's that one there. Nice overall, slightly grey, flat looking image. The green channel, the detail on the front of the tree is looking a little better. A little bit more contrast in there. I think red looks better in the sky. I think red looks better on the ground. Green looks better on the front of the tree. Blue, as usual, looking the highest contrast of all, makes the sky way too bright. Um, the detail is looking very noisy and very scraggy in there. And yes, scraggy is a photographer's term. Um, I think red and green have it here. So, having decided that I that I like the overall red and I'd like some of the green in there as well, I'm going to press Control and the key in the top left of the keyboard, which I mention every time. On the British keyboard is the back quote key, on an American keyboard is the tilde key, and on every other keyboard in the world is probably something different. If you get absolutely stuck, go to the Channels palette here and click on the RGB channel. What I've been doing is essentially the same as this. So you can do the same thing by going to the channels palette and clicking on the red, green and blue channels by hand. And then when you're done, click back on the RGB channel and then go back to your layers palette. So, um, the way I'm going to use what I've just learned is to create another layer and once again it's an adjustment layer, this is not, these are not destructive edits remember um, so I'm going to click the new adjustment layer button and I'm going to go to channel mixer that pops up this dialog and the first thing I want to do here is say I want a monochrome image and to start with because I've chosen a monochrome image it's going to say output channel grey which is what I want and it's going to take all of the information from the red channel and as you can see what we're doing here is saying I want this much of the red channel, I want this much of the green channel, and I want this much of the blue channel. And Photoshop's pretty clever because you can not only say I want 100% of the red channel, you could say I want 200% of the red channel, or maybe 150% of the red channel, and then instead of instead of 50% of the green channel, I want minus 50% of the green channel. And what that will do, instead of adding in that information from the green channel, it would subtract it. So you could, if you wanted, make some quite interesting effects with this. Um, but essentially, I'm going to keep it simple. I would like 50% of the red and 50% of the green and none of the blue. Oh, well, close enough. I'll type those in, shall I? Right, so I've got 50% of the red, 50% of the green, none of the blue. And I think that's looking fairly good. I'm just looking for the detail here. It's a little bit grey on the front there. Let's just see if... I've just balanced it more towards the green now. Uh, that's not bad. Let's try balancing it more towards the red. I think actually balance more towards the red gives us a little more contrast on the front of the branch here. So I'm going to end up with 70-30, which I'm pretty happy with. I'm going to press OK on that. And I think that's probably where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, sorry if it's a slightly short show, but as I say, I'm planning to go away. I wanted to get the show out before I go away so that you've got something for next Monday. Um, Thank you for watching, folks. Uh, remember, if you're an iPod video user and you'd like to see this show on your iPod screen, then please drop me an email at photowalkthrough at gmail.com and I will let you have the address of a page where you can subscribe to the iPod version. It's a test feed for now. I need more testers, and if people like how it's looking, then I will consider making it a permanent fixture. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Uh, watch for the show next a week on Monday. That will be the 20th... 6th of, yes, the 26th of June. 
Thanks a lot. Good night.